Get out of the way, get out of the way. Train wreck video coming through. All right. Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. How are you doing? You doing well? Is it cold where you are? Is it warm you in the Southern Hemisphere? Summer right now? I'm jealous. I'm just playing. It's almost like summer here. It has been anyway. It's been like 68 degrees or something like that. It's gonna say 69, decided not to. So today I'm coming at you guys with five fragrances that I've been wearing here recently. A lot of these are newer pickups. So you could say it's some new fragrances I've been wearing. Uh, basically, I just wanna talk about them real quick. Like I said, train wreck of a video. Let's go. All right, let's kick things off with a commodity. Yeah, we're gonna go with Moss bold or just moss plus depending on how you read the label so in case you're unaware of what commodity's been doing lately which uh sometimes it's hard to keep up with because it seems like they're here then they're gone then they're here then they're gone then they're here then they're gone you don't know what i'm talking about they came out and they were at sephora and they were kind of you know kind of hip they had these fragrances like gin whiskey book paper gold uh, obviously commodities get it and uh, they, like I said, they were kind of hip. People liked them, at least decently, seemed like. And then they went out of business, went bankrupt. <laughs> so that's no good. And then um, they got resurrected like a phoenix, you know, coming back from the ashes by Twisted Lily or Euro Perfumes, I guess, technically. And they were pretty much as they were before, you know, same bottle style, the little stout wide bottles and uh, same fragrances and stuff. And, and then they went away again. I was like, what is, what is going on here, man? And then they came back again, but this time with a whole new idea. Yeah, it's a really long drawn out way to get to this, but a whole new idea, scent space. Control the space of your scent. So they have six fragrances as of right now. Each one of them has three different iterations. So the idea basically is that you have an increasing strength and also the, the fragrances are tweaked depending on which one. So you have your personal fragrances and those come in a, a white bottle. Let me grab one. So yeah, a white one like this. So this is your personal scent space. So it sits close to the skin. Then you have your normal ones, which are expressive. They look like this, that's milk. And then you have the bold ones like so. So the bold ones are the ones that I've gravitated toward the most so far, because you know, they've got a little more going on, a little richer, a little bit more depth, a little bit more power. And I love power, don't we all? So this of course has oak moss, it's got bergamot, pettigrain, uh, the normal expressive moss, that one gets compared to bergamot 22, especially in the opening, it's pretty similar. This one, not as close to B22. It actually is very vaguely reminiscent of Aventus. Very vaguely though. Maybe if you had little tiny bits of Aventus and bits of Bergamot 22 and they had a baby, maybe it'd be kind of like this, at least in the opening. I do like it though. I think that it, it has a nice little extra added punch, a little oomph that kind of pushes it over the edge for me uh, as far as in comparison to the expressive normal version of the fragrance. These do appear to be ever so slightly divisive. You know, some people, they don't like this added complexity of three different versions of each fragrance, and then other people think it's really cool. I'm one of the ones that thinks it's cool. Now, one thing that I would suggest is if you were thinking about picking up some commodity fragrances, pick up the exploration kit because it is sick. You get all three versions of all six fragrances and you get a, like a booklet and all kinds of stuff in there. So get that, that thing is cool. If nothing else, it's just fun to go through and contrast and compare. And if you do buy anything from Commodity, use code GENTS10, 10% 10 off. It's off the entire friggin' website. Also, Twisted Lily's website, GENTS10 works there too. And I'll link all these below. All right, next up, a little bitty, itty, bitty, tiny baby bottle. It's from Aaron Terrence Hughes. And it's OM. OM. Now, when Aaron Terrence Hughes first hit the brand, uh, I was a little bit... <laughs> suspicious. I wasn't sure what was going on there. And then I, I got four fragrances from Max Aroma, just like little travel sizes, about like these. And uh, one of them I really hated. It was called Neon. And then two I thought were all right. And then one I thought was pretty good. Uh, but you could say that I came away from that experience not blown away. And then I got this one, Smolder, Aaron Terrence Hughes and Fragmentals Fragrance, which actually 
also really, really good, but it's limited edition. I think he can't really, can't really find it now. So I'm not gonna talk about this too much, but if it pops back up in the future, worth checking out, especially if you like things in the vein of like uh, Creation E or, or Enigma. It doesn't smell the same as that, but it's like in a similar family, you could say, you know, one of those things where if you like this, you'll probably like that. But anyway, I got that in and I got in some other stuff with it. And this was one of the things I got in. And again, my, my expectations were not very high. But then I sprayed that on and my brain turned into jelly and just kind of came out my ear. That sounds so weird. It smelled good. So this one has iris. Uh, I think it's technically orris concrete that's in here. And it is great. It is fantastic. Uh, oh man. <laughs> It's a good thing this table is made out of wood and not marble. The bottle's fine. It's got amber and tonka also. You've got this sweetness, this warmth that mixes together with that Oris. It is fantastic. If you like scents, you know, in the style of Dior Homme Intense, Valentino Uomo Intense, Gentleman Eau de Parfum, stuff like that, this is of that ilk um, at the highest level, basically. It's right up there. And also, of course, good amount of vanilla in here and I love vanilla. So that scent, really, really, really good. Kind of a nondescript name, you know, just Ohm, but it is, it is lovely. Like legitimately just make you cry. Up next from Bulgari, Terra Essence. Bulgari man, Terra Essence. This thing, it, it's like, it takes the torch of Gucci Guilty Absolute from Alberto Marias and just carries it right over to Bulgari and goes, hey, here you go. Now, it doesn't smell exactly like Gucci Guilty Absolute, but you definitely get, you know, the, the vibe that it was kind of inspired by that fragrance. Maybe it evolved off from that fragrance because it's the same perfumer here. Uh, there's also maybe little bits and pieces of Terre d'Hermes in here as well, but it's not close enough to either Gucci Guilty Absolute or Terre d'Hermes to say, oh, this is a one-to-one a -one replacement of that. It's just little bits and pieces taken from each and melded together and put into here. Ultimately though, that does make it its own thing. It's quite earthy. It's got that a bit of dirt to it. That's got that kind of edge. There's also vetiver in here, which is where you're gonna find that little bit of a, a connection with Terre d'Hermes. Then you have uh, Styrax and Oris in here as well with a little spritz, just a little touch, like a little of citron over the top. Some people will find it a little bit rubbery uh, which is kind of a complaint that people had with Guilty Absolute. Uh, people would say it had a medicinal band-aid kind of smell to it. So some people are gonna pick that up here as well. Like I said, could come across like rubber. Some people say it comes across like plastic, but it's, it's definitely gonna stand out. It's one of those fragrances that when I smell it, I think, man, that is exciting. Yes, it's got little bits and pieces of these other fragrances, but it's its own thing and it's really cool. Stands apart and in, in the winter, it shines. Next up is a fragrance that I think rocks. In fall and winter, I love this thing. One of my favorites from the house, and it's a favorite niche house of mine, so it's like one of the favorites of the favorites. It's Amber Kiso from DS and Durga. This one has leather, it's got hinoki, it has maple, cypress, incense, woodsy, leathery, smoky. That's what you're getting and you're getting it full bore. And all you have to do is take a look at that, that coloration, it's not messing around, but it's not so abrasive or rough that it's hard to pull off. I mean, it's got a, it's got a punch. You're gonna pick up that leather right away. Even though it's a base note, you pick up that, that leather immediately. And even though it does have this strength to it, it has this, this ability to overwhelm you if you spray too much. As I said, it's not too rough not too aggressive. And man, do I love Amber Kiso. This is gonna be one of my top 10 niche fragrances for winter this year. It lasts for freaking ever. Last up, Ferragamo Intense Leather. I know this is not new. I've had it for a while, just haven't worn it. So I decided to go ahead and bust this out, give it some wear and, and kind of develop more feelings on it. Even more feelings. I have talked about this in the past. I've featured it in the past. It's just, you know, I wore it and put it back and just kind of put it out of my mind, put it out of there, you know, because for me, Ferragamo has really been about Womo and Womo's signature. Those ones I just, you know, 
keep going back to some of the Aqua Essentia All line. I've been, you know, wearing those for years. But these new ones, uh, I'm just kind of, I've, I've kind of been lukewarm on them, we'll say. Now this shares some notes with some of the other fragrances on here. It's got iris, it's got leather. Uh, it's got earthy notes. So, I mean, in, in a lot of ways, actually, you can draw comparisons or links between pretty much all these. Now, of course, I have not smelled the newest Ferragamo fragrance. Uh, actually, I don't think I've seen that for sale yet, unless I've just not been paying attention. But I haven't smelled that one yet. Maybe, maybe that one will be great. But this one is, is sort of a like a fresh citrusy fruity leather with some earthy aspects to it. As if you took uh, the opening and, and different parts of Bleecker Street from Bond Number no. 9, which is a big love of mine, and mixed it with uh, some leathery facets from other fragrances. So you have this freshness, you have this mass appeal, and then uh, ultimately a leathery and, and slightly earthy dry down. I mean, the presentation is really nice. The bottle looks good. The leather on the cap and on the front feels good. It's just, I don't know that it's gonna replace the Womo line for me. And while it does definitely smell nice, smells pleasant, it's a good compliment factor potentially, this one doesn't have a big wow factor for me. So even after giving it more wear, I don't know that it really grabs me. You know, it's one of those scents that you smell it and you think, that's nice. And here in an hour, I'll probably forget how it smells. So there we go, guys. Some of the fragrances that I've been wearing and just some general thoughts. Let me know in the comments some of the things that you've been rocking. Thank you for hanging with me. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. Stay safe out there, guys.